Hey everybody, it's Hussein Kabani, your favorite broker. And guess what? We've got Gathia back from Nava Wilson Law. Thank you for joining us. Of course. Uh, we had an awesome little podcast a little while ago, mm -hmm. and that was more about like litigation because I was having so many issues uh, with clients and then deals not going through. So we were really focused on that. And now the question I have for you is, and I'm sure you got it a lot, is this. <laughs> so the tenant's just not going to pay. Like they're not, they're in their tenancy. They're not paying their rent. What do I do? What's the first step I do? How long do I wait? Okay, so their rent is due July 1st. They didn't pay me. What's my next step? Do I do I just sit back for like uh, two weeks and just hope that they're going to send me an e-transfer for the money? Like when, when do you act? You can act the next day. So if rent is due July 1st, July 2nd, you can give notice. Uh, the one thing with non-payment of rent is what a board will take into consideration is um, – how much the landlord sort of tried to work with them. So, um, you know, I, I always t tell my my landlord clients, if you have a tenant that's not paying, I, I don't suggest doing it the next day. I suggest, you know, send send an email being like, hey, just to let you know rent is due. If you're having some difficulty, let me know. Let's see if we can work something out. Um, again, it might not yield anything. And it might, it, maybe it does yield. Maybe the, your tenant responds and says, hey, can I pay half now and half in five days? That's still to your benefit. So I would, if it sure. works for you, it might make sense to accept that. But you still, you need to build that record. Um, so, you know, if you spend the first week being like, hey, let, let's see if, well, you know, let's get on a payment plan, blah, 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 something like that. Um, because you will need that at the board because the board will take that into consideration. But effectively, you can you can serve notice the next day. Um, which Sorry, but does it make sense to do with that? And I'll at least send the email. Like uh, my understanding was, is that, hey, maybe I do send the notice and at the same time just say, hey, like I got to send you this notice because you didn't pay, but I'm willing to work with you. Yeah, you at can least you have that. it on record at that. Like you did do it correctly. Yeah, of course. And also you're, you're uh, not wasting time yeah. because in the event that your tenant doesn't agree to pay and they're like, hey, I just don't have money too bad for you, yeah. then at least you haven't waited two, three, four weeks until you give them the notice. You can do that. You can give the notice and say, hey, look, I'm protecting my interests. I I, I don't need, to, I won't proceed with the application if, you know, we can work yeah. together with something, but at least, you know, you started the process. Um, and then once, once you, so say, say, you know, say you've tried and, and they're not working with you, then you give the N4 notice, which will outline the termination date plus how much they owe you. I cannot stress enough, not just with the N4, but with any notice that a landlord gives to a tenant, ensure that it is filled out correctly. Okay. The amount of emails and calls that I get that say, hey, we gave notice, we finally got a hearing date and, you know, we we put the wrong postal code or uh, we forgot to name all the tenants or I did the math wrong and they actually owed me 500 less than what was on that paper. Anything that the board can use as a reason to throw out your notice, they will. Anything, any small Anything. technicality. Postal if, code is incorrect. Postal code. Sometimes, it it sometimes when people count um, notice period, so you, you start counting the, the day after the day you give notice. So some people, they count the day they gave notice. So they'll say, okay, today, tomorrow, and they count 14 days, and your notice is one day short. Yeah. It's a day, but, and technically by the time you got to the board, it's been six months plus, yeah. <laughs> plus but um, they can throw it out for that reason. So I get a second pair of eyes. It's a very, all the forms are fairly straightforward, but make sure they are filled. I, I cannot stress how important it is to make sure that they are filled out correctly. Um, but essentially, so what will happen is you fill out the form, you, you give notice. If they don't pay the rent, they basically have two options. Either they bring the rent to good standing or they leave. And if they don't do either, you have to file what's called an L1 application with the landlord. And how long do you board. have to wait to do that? The uh, you have, you can apply the day after the termination date. So if your termination date is, so like I said, it's supposed to be 14 days. Um, so basically they have 14 days have 14 to bring days. it up to date. Yeah. So if if their rent is due July 1st, I'm going to work it through. So July mm -hmm. 1st, the rent is due. They didn't pay. July 2nd, you send out this notice and you basically say, I'm willing to work with you. And you and the, the date's what, the 15th or 16th, something yeah. like that at that point. And then if there is no, nothing that they're going to do at that point. Then you can give them the L1. You file, yeah, you file the L1 with the landlord tenant board and you um, wait for your hearing date. Um, obviously, between now and when your hearing date happens, more rent is going to accrue. And if they don't pay it off, uh, you know, it just the balance becomes You can't do anything at, at all. Anything. For, and how long roughly does it take right now? It depends now? on sure. where your property is. Let's use Toronto GT sure. as an example. It is taking about eight months eight at months. least to have a hearing date. And oh. then... Um, 
And then, so, so, but, but what you do have available to you is five days before the hearing, you, you provide what's called an updated L1, L9, and you will let the board know as of the date of the hearing, how much money they owe you. Wow. Um, again, the board will take into consideration your efforts as a landlord to work with your tenant. So do make sure that you do that. Mm. And the, the board also will take into consideration the tenant's circumstances. Okay. Um, and not to say that they'll say, you know, they don't have to leave because I'll, they understand that, you know, they're not paying their rent. But what that will affect is, A, if the board will implement their own payment plan that they make the tenant stay on, or B, um, if they if it is at a point where they're, they're going to evict, uh, they can extend the time period. So a standard order for eviction is 11 days. That's the minimum that... Um, a tenant can get, but, you know, if the tenant comes and, you know, the, they say a story about how, you know, they have young kids and whatever the reasoning is that they can't, um, afford rent and blah, 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 uh, the board can order, like it, they can stay for 30 days before they leave, stuff like that. But when you get to that point of like your hearing and you've done everything correctly as a mm -hmm. landlord, like your, your postal code's <laughs> correct and you, you know, you've given them the updated form mm -hmm. five days prior to or whatever, and everything is correct on your end and they just come in and they're like, well, we can't afford it or whatever. Are, are, is a landlord tenant board going to say, okay, well, what can you afford and try to make arrangements like that? They, or is it cut and dry? They're going to say like, okay, dude, like you can't afford, you're already this far back. You got to get out and here's 11 days or 30 days, but you got to leave. And do they give you a notice at that point that basically you can enforce at that point with it through the sheriff's office? So it, it's not a, a yes or no answer. So like I said, depending on, sometimes depending on the arrears, like, so say for example, this was the first time they, they paid a branch late and they're making minimal payments here and there as much as they can. And, you know, they're, they're showing the board that they have an intention to bring it into good standing. What the, what they can do is the board will in, put their own terms. So they'll say, you know, Rent is due on the first of the month, and every 14th, you pay an additional $500 to pay back the arrears. Um, and the way that the order is written, and in you, you, you can ask this as the landlord, is that if they breach these terms, instead of having to start the process again and go back to the board, you can just um, file, a, it's a different application that you file, and, and there's no hearing. Okay. So you just say, they breached the order, give me my eviction order. And then you take that eviction and you enforce it through the but sheriff. But that's something as a landlord you have to ask while they're coming up with this, so you have to know about it. You have to know because sometimes what they'll, they'll, they can just do what like a settlement agreement that says they, they, they've they paid it. And if they don't put that language in, it is common language and, and most, especially um, legal professionals, like paralegals and lawyers that are, are before the board, they know that you want language like that. Um, but that is something that you would want to ensure is in your order that if they breach this agreement it, and, and the board, the, the, the wording they always use is not a dollar short or a day late, um, then you can go and enforce right away. Um, again, the benefit of that is you don't have to go through the hearing process again um, and you can just go straight to eviction. But um Oftentimes, because of the delay, by the time you're in front of the board, the arrears are so high, um, the board will generally still order an eviction. Like I said, they might give them more time and stuff like that, but they do generally- They're not going to try to make a yeah, payment these, plan. Like these you're, days, you're like $10,000 or you know $15,000 into this thing. They're not yeah. going to let this person stay. Yeah, especially, and to be honest, that's low. Like, okay. but think about it. If rent is, uh, say, a rent is two thousand yeah. dollars, and it's taking you eight months to get before the board, you're almost like you're at like and and least, yeah. yeah, and they've already saved. They've already before you even filed, they were already behind two months. Like yeah. you're almost at twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. Like I had a tenant where I sorry, I had a landlord where by the time we got in front of the board, um, the arrears were higher than the limit that the board could order. So the the, what the, was board, the limit? it's thirty. They're they're bound by the small claims limit, which is thirty five thousand, and we were at like say thirty six maybe. Um, and my order was limited to thirty five thousand because they couldn't. That's so much. Yeah, which is crazy. So the, like chances and like it would take you a lifetime to be back. Like if you're already this behind, yeah. like it would take you forever. So sure. the board wouldn't put that on you as a landlord, but they will, like I said, uh, see what they can do for the tenant to to um help them at least with time so that's a long process but there but also what we were talking about there's no guarantee that you're getting your money back sell it sell it sell it sell it sold sell it sell it sell it sell it sold sell it sell it sell it sell it sold sell it sell it sell it sell it sold